What's good, y'all? The spring season of anime is here, and it's starting off strong. We've got our weekly economic lesson with Spice and Wolf, another season of Mushoku Tensei, and season 3 of Konosuba. So, needless to say, spring is already packed with some heavy hitters, but even with that stacked lineup, the anime original Jellyfish Can't Swim in the Night has become what I'm looking forward to the most every week. Which honestly is surprising. So many years ago, anime originals were either hit or miss, but they've been killing it for a while now. And yes, the title is weird as hell, but I swear it'll make sense and be super meaningful later on. The overall message for the show is pretty simple. Be willing to chase your dreams. But with all, but with all things, it's the execution that takes a show to another level. Sure, following your dreams is all well and good, but wanting to share something fueled by your artistic creativity comes with some struggles. I mean, it is in, it is the most me I will thing I've watched in a minute with some of the worries these girls have, and this is where the show shines. People are quick to give up on their passions for many reasons. Some have to face the reality of abandoning the uncertainty of a creative path path work for something that's more stable, or maybe they change directions because it's not what's expected of them. Breaking from the norm of going to school and getting a quote unquote regular job can be scary simply for the fact that there is no playbook, or even just the fear alone of putting your work out there can stop someone. Having something you put your heart and soul into just for it to be ruthlessly torn apart is a quick way for that person to never try it again and be ashamed of the things they create. Each one of the main girls have that passion but they're bogged down by the negativity of their past. It's almost like there's three versions of, of themselves operating at the same time. Their past self who gave up on their dreams, their current self who's fighting to keep the flame going, and their idealistic fu future self that they're trying to become. They have to find the drive to once again be proud of themselves, and their woke, and in the effort it takes to even start a journey like this. Similar to Jellyfish, they've been drifting along, letting life take them wherever it wanted, but once the girls come together, they can absorb the positive light from each other's creativity and truly shine like they want to. And that's why Jellyfish can't swim at night. I told you it was going to come full circle. It might not be as hard coming for me, but I swear it's a really solid delivery in the show and sets up the overall themes moving forward pretty well, if I'm being honest. Aside from that, the show also just has amazing direction so far. The cuts they make during those intense emotional moments really help drive home the character's mental state and their ability to slowly work through the problems. Plus, I know I haven't mentioned it yet, but this anime does have some musical elements as well, and the way they position the cameras really elevates the scenes, making them become more dynamic. Whether it's a high blight performance, a heartfelt piano recital, or even a VTuber music video, the amount of variation in what we get keeps those performances feeling unique as they fit into the narrative direction that specific episode wanted to take. Along with the camera angles, the use of symbolism is also very effective. Two instances have stood out to me so far. First, going back to that thing I said about following the expected path in life, we can see Mahiru being forced to choose her costume for Halloween. Instead of being able to choose the devil, which represents that more creative and free side of herself, she's forced to choose the angel that represents that side of herself that would please others by sticking to the status quo. What's even more funny is that the devil costume was picked up by the person who's responsible for setting her free and giving her confidence to walk down that path once again. The other moment being Kiwi dumping all of her money into the game she's playing. It's not her just buying things to make herself feel better, it's that her invincible persona was shadowed, so she's coping by making herself feel powerful any way she can and by leveling up in that game enough. Little moments like these in the show add so much to the level of storytelling and deepen their journey as each of them overcome their past trauma. I know we're only 3 episodes in at the moment, but Jellyfish Can't Swim in the Night is quickly becoming one of my favorite non-sequel anime this season. It's able to touch on emotions that I think everyone has experienced in one way or another, while also serving a reminder that your dreams don't have to stay dreams as long as you're willing to fight for them. So that's what I think. I'll be looking forward to this show every week. Let me know what you think if you started it or if this has convinced you and you're willing to give it a shot now. And subscribe if you want to chill and talk about anime with me. And I'll see you in the next video where I'll be covering another spring anime original. Peace.